So all right, today we're going to have a look at Sabrent's new PCIe uh, NVMe add-in card. It's a model ECP3X4. You can see it comes in a rather unassuming box. On the back side we have some of the features and specifications, system requirements that are listed here. So everything you need to know about what will work and what won't work. But let's open it up and have a look at the inside. When I first saw this I was really excited about it and so I'm really excited about having the opportunity to review this thing now. I know I'm probably not alone in being uh, a storage junkie. I know there's a lot of us out there and NVMe drives are just so fast. Even a slow NVMe drive is just so much faster than a regular SSD it's not even funny and the M.2 form factor really does a lot as far as saving space. So we got here looks like a, uh, just a informational card of some sort. They've got a user manual. Looks like it's actually got pages to it rather than a, a fold out sheet. So that tells us what we need to know about installing it. Looks like we have a pack of screws for the NVMe drives. Comes with, uh, looks like a little screwdriver. Yep, it's got a little Phillips screwdriver. So let's take it out of the anti static bag and see what we have. Looks like it's got a Ziploc on the end of the static bag rather than folded and taped. Let's get that out of here. So it's rather nice looking. Uh, black, it looks like anodized aluminum. It's got some good foam padding that it came in to protect it. Let's get this out of the way here. So yeah, it's kind of nice looking. It's got the Sabrent logo in that uh, gray color. It's got the serial number and model number sticker on the back with uh, no backplate, just a blank PCB. So, yeah, it's really nice looking. Looks like that tab got bent a little bit there. I'll straighten it out. So, let's take it apart. Get the screwdriver out here. So, I'm going to zip this apart and we'll get a look at the inside. So the, you'll see that the screws are captive and they're spring-loaded and I've got the drives installed in there. I have a 2 terabyte Intel drive and three old uh, 256 gigabyte uh, SSDs or laptop fulls. So I've got it on my system. I haven't fired it up yet. And you can see that the rear audio or the front panel audio and the RGB cables are kind of a tight fit but they, they fit well booting up the computer it actually looks really nice. I'm pleased with that. But let's jump into Windows because what really matters is whether, whether this works, right? So you can see I've labeled these Sabrent 1, 2, 1, 2 and 3 and then this one with Windows 11 Ghost Spectre is one of the 256 gigabyte laptop pulls. So let's run some speed tests. One of the things that's really nice about this is that it's totally plug and play. It did not reduce my GPU uh, bandwidth. My GPU is still running at X16. This is in a, an X4 slot and there was no bifurcation settings needed in the BIOS or anything. Just absolutely 100% plug and play. So that is awesome. So this uh, Two terabyte drive, drive E that's in the upper left hand corner there. That's an older Intel drive, and these are all old uh, Samsung. The others are all Samsung 256 gigabyte NVMe's that were pulled from some Lenovo laptops that were upgraded to larger storage capacity. So the this Intel drive is one of those oldie moldies. It's kind of slow, and it's running at its rated speed. Uh, looks like these older Samsung drives, OEM drives, are running at their rated speed as well. So that's all looking good. 
I did speed this part of the video up 10 times normal speed so I wouldn't waste a lot of your time. So I'm clicking both of these drives at the same time and confirming that the read and write speed was not impacted by both of them having a test run at the same time. And you can see that the drive there on the right basically has uh, more or less the same speeds as the one on the left. So it does not appear that the drive test degraded with both drives having data read and writ read from and written to them at the same time. Looks like this one drive here might be a little bit slower than the others, but these are old drives. So yeah, that looks good. Let's run an Anvil benchmark and see how that looks. And let's also have a look at the temperatures. So running those tests on these drives did, does not appear to have heated them up at all. They all have very respectable temperatures, which which we'd expect with that big hit, big heat sink and that nice thermal pad that's on the inside of it. But it's always good to confirm, right? So let's see what Anvil says. It's looking good. Test on another drive, see how it's doing. So let's run an AS SSD to wrap this up. Don't expect we'll find anything out of the ordinary here. But I know some of you have your preferred tests, so running a variety of them. So there we go. That's that's proper performance for that old drive. So it certainly looks like the speed is as expected with AS SSD as well. So overall I'm very pleased with this product and I definitely recommend it. I hope you enjoyed this very quick down and dirty review video to help you get a closer look at it. So let's uh, head back over to the Extreme Hardware Review.